Hello, my name is John Gagan and I have a dream, a dream for the Pilbara. But before I tell you what that dream is, let me explain how I came to have such a dream. In 1970, my wife Marion and I pulled a caravan from Brisbane to the Pilbara, travelling 6,000 kilometres to work for Mount Newman Mining in Port Hedland. The Nullarbor was a dirt road and heading north from Perth, the bitumen stopped just north of Carnarvon at Barradale. Caratha was in the planning stages and South Hedland did not exist. We lived in Port Hedland for 34 years and our two daughters were born there. I was made redundant by BHP in 2003 and it was now time to decide what to do next with our lives. After some considerable thought, we decided to buy another caravan to become a grey nomad and to tour Australia. Over the next six years, the open road took us to places all over the country where we found and experienced so many and varied special tourist attractions, museums and places of interest. Many of these towns are small, like Boulia in the west of Queensland. It has a population of only 300, but here they have created a museum dedicated to the Min Min Light, which is regularly seen in that area. One of the more famous places of interest is at Winton, with a population of only 1,600. Winton was the home of Walsing Matilda, and they built here a centre dedicated to that purpose. Unfortunately, it was burnt down on the 17th of June 2015. But because of the significance to the town, they're raising funds to rebuild it again. A number of other places we visited in Queensland were the John Flynn Centre for the Royal Flying Doctor Service in Concurry. In Georgetown, there's a place called Terrestrial, which showcases the rocks and the minerals of the region. In the Dinosaur Triangle of Winton, Hewenden and Richmond, Richmond has created the Chronosaurus Corner, dedicated to showing off the dinosaurs and the fossils that are all found throughout that region. Outback at Isa is a mining and historical centre at Mount Isa. Here they've dug a complete underground mine for the tourists to give them an idea and a taste of what life is like underground. The big rig in Roma shows off the oil industry in that part of the state. And in Charleville, they have the Cosmos Centre, which has a large range of special telescopes to look at the stars. And of course in Longridge, we can't go past the Qantas Founders Centre and the Stockman Hall of Fame. Both speak for themselves. Now other places we visited going on through New South Wales and Victoria were the Killer Whale Museum in Eden, which shows off the whale industry, Sovereign Hill and the Eureka Centre in Ballarat are both well known nationally. And finally in Warrnambool we found a seafaring heritage village called Flagstaff Hill. I could go on, but by now I think you're getting the picture. As we travelled, we reflected back on what we knew of the history of the Pilbara and the amazing journey that it has had for over a century. It didn't take long before I started to put my thoughts on paper, listing the many points of interest that we could think of about the Pilbara and its towns. And this now brings me to my dream. My dream for the Pilbara. I dream of a tourist attraction to rival that of the Stockman Hall of Fame, but with a uniquely Pilbara flavour. For now, I'm going to call it the Pilbara Pioneers. And because of my connection to Port Hedland, and that Port Hedland will celebrate 125 years in 2021, I have put this proposal to the town of Port Hedland as a project for that celebration in 2021.
Many people may wonder what could possibly be of interest in such a venture and what could be displayed. The Outback Advisor and the Stockman Hall of Fame both offer a conceptual idea for a model to use. I have chosen three general headings as areas of interest that could be covered as a starting point. These are the past, the present and the people. I'm sure other people will come up with some other topics and ideas that could be added later with some thought. Let's look back at the past. We must start with our original Aboriginal inhabitants and their culture, including the stone carvings found at the borough. Next, we'd look at early exploration of the region, the start of the pearling industry, pastoral, both sheep and cattle, the early mining for gold at Marble Bar. Included would be the work of the Australian Inland Mission, hospitals, churches, the ports, education and early cyclones. World War II would highlight the bombing of Port Hedland, the secret bomber airfield at Cronutta Downs, as well as Z Force operating from Exmouth. The historical Aboriginal strike of 1946, roads and bridges, railway to Marble Bar, power and water at the time, all need to be shown. Transport, as well, has always played an amazing part in the North, with aviation, including Sir Charles Kingford Smith, and the MMA Vickers Viscount crash of 1968, as well as the Rhodes Ridley truck specially built for hauling manganese. And finally, there is the early development of the towns and settlements throughout the Pilbara. With the present, we would include the modern pastoral industry and the geology of the area. This leads us now into mining, which of course includes gold, manganese, asbestos, iron ore, salt, copper, tantalite, tin, gas and oil, nickel and other minerals such as lithium which is currently being drilled at Pilpangora, as well as we could include the modern pearling industry. We would also look at the modern development of infrastructure such as the towns, shipping and ports, roads and bridges, the railways, communications such as the fibre optic cable that comes in from Indonesia the cyclones and the damage that they have done in recent times, border protection and defence, the Royal Flying Doctor Service and airports, as well as the atom bomb testing on the Montebello Islands, the detention centre and our national parks. Finally, we'd look at the people, and this would reflect on the Aboriginals, both past and present, the early explorers, the pastoralists, miners, Percy Gratwick VC and Bert Madigan MC. Diversity of nationalities that helped to develop the Pilbara, the government workers and the public servants, private enterprise people, sportsmen and women. The list goes on. I know, you know, we all know that the Pilbara has an interesting, diverse, unique and fascinating history. Bits and pieces of that history are scattered everywhere. Some are accessible and some are not. Through people like you, I would like to encourage your support for a proposal that the Pilbara pioneers be developed and to build a special display centre for the region to bring all these points of history together into one place before they are lost forever. I appreciate that it will be a very large and a very expensive exercise that will need the support of federal, state and local governments, businesses both large and small from throughout the region and would include organisations with paid and volunteer workers. In Appendix A is a table showing a few details of some of the centres, the towns and their populations. If these little towns can successfully run their unique centres with all the resources and population in the Pilbara, we are in a privileged position to create something super special.
Now that the mining and construction boom is over, something new is needed to stimulate interest and to continue the momentum into the future within our region. I believe the Pilbara Pioneers could be just that project. It would need a large plot of land to be located in a prominent position adjoining but off the highway with an extensive area of many acres to allow for further expansion. Some displays would need to be housed in large purpose-built air-conditioned buildings using the latest high-tech gadgetry, while others such as the mining and pastoral equipment, windmills, locomotives, etc. could be set out in a specially prepared yard. I believe it could be a new home for the Tourist Information and Visitors Centre. Included could be a coffee shop, art gallery, souvenir, book and gift shop, and there would need to be a large car park to cater for buses, caravans and motorhomes. From Port Hedland, I envisage the Dalgetty House, the Don Rhodes Mining Museum and the three BHP locomotives could all be relocated to be part of this new complex. Maybe some of the locomotives and rolling stock at Dampier could also find a new home here as well. This would be an opportunity to engage government departments such as Western Power and Horizon Power for the latest ideas in energy and power generation such as wind generators, solar farm and power storage. The Water Corporation could showcase water conservation and recycling. The building industry could offer the latest innovations in cooling, building materials and ideas to be a showcase for this region. Maybe even one of the West Australian universities could use the Centre for practical, hands-on and experimental training. And of course the area would need to be landscaped with special gardens of local desert flora, displaying the wildflowers in the winter and spring, which would be a highlight to the complex as this is also the main tourist time. During the centenary of Port Hedland in 1996, many people were interviewed to record their stories before they were lost with the passing of time. I believe a centre like the Pilbara Pioneers will take preservation a step further by offering an opportunity to collect, save and care for objects in our history as well as the stories and information before all of these are lost for all time. There are thousands of tourists travelling through West Australia and the Pilbara looking for that something special to visit. Apart from the whaling station and the new Anzac Centre in Albany, the Kalgoorlie Boulder Gold Centre and the Karajini Visitor Centre, there's also the Maritime Museum in Fremantle, but very few other examples like this in West Australia. As the saying goes, build it and they will come. I believe the Pilbara Pioneers would be an initiative that would put the Pilbara on the map and pay dividends for many years to come. This would make the Pilbara the focus for, tra for tourists travelling to rather than be a place they have to travel through to go somewhere else. The centre would need a unique and catchy logo and of course a name. But until another one comes along, I shall continue to call it the Pilbara Pioneers. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to my dream. Now with help, your help, I dream that it could become a reality. A reality that would showcase the Pilbara in all its glory for many, many years to come. If you'd like to find out more, feel free to phone or send me an email as I would love to hear from you and how you could help. Thanks for listening.